please stand if you are able. The Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. Glory to you, O God. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. And so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Did you know that all Scripture has a political context that informs it? When we read the Scripture, about Jesus being our good shepherd. We might feel all the warm and fuzzies about this shepherd who was there for and we should feel that way. But this, this, this is not just a, a, a spiritual passage. It's not just a spiritual comfort, folks. It is also a political embarrassment for those who abuse their power. You see, all of Scripture, like all of life, has a political context. Can we escape politics? Where can we go today? You can't. Now, maybe if you went out to Alaska, but even there, you can't escape climate change, can you? That's a, we cannot escape the re, There's, there's a, what are the certainties of life? Death and taxes. taxes. <laughs> and another certainty. If you disrupt the political context, you can expect to get in trouble. That's what's happening to Peter here, actually. Why is Peter in trouble? Because he's doing what Jesus told him to do. He healed somebody when he's not when he broke their rules. And so now he has to stand in court before the religious and political authorities, because religion and politics were not separate at that time. The religious political authority, and you're breaking our rule. How dare you do something nice to someone without our permission? You know, 2020 was a, a year the pandemic was a but not just the pandemic, also our politics was. The politics of polarization. Could you escape it? No, it's everywhere. You know, as Lutherans, we rejoice in the Reformation. We might even feel warm and fuzzy about Luther's big discovery that, the, that uh, we're justified by faith, faith by faith. But did you know that had a political context? That, Luther's big revelation came because at that point they had this thing called indulgences, and all you had to do was go to church, and um, if you gave some money to the church, you got to go where? You got to go to heaven. Hey, how are you? You get your relatives to heaven. You know, they get them out of purgatory. So this is a real money maker for the church, isn't it? And Luther says that can't be right. Because if, it's really, if, it's just, if, we, if, it, if we're justified by faith and we don't have to do anything, then we, can't, we can stop being manipulated by the church, especially where it hurts. <laughs> Martin Luther was forced out of the church. He didn't leave it, he was forced out. Our warm and fuzzy scripture is really Jesus criticizing the religious political system of his day. It all began when Jesus healed a blind man on the Sabbath. This is the context for our scripture here. And the religious leaders get all upset because this is a threat to their entire system. A system based on keeping the rules that they had established. Remember up. Uh, uh, Rosa Parks, what did Rosa Parks do? She sat where? In the front of the bus. They, they couldn't allow that because that was a threat to their whole system. 
Right? If we elect one exception, all it goes, you know, we lose all our authority. This is the same thing with healing the blind man on the Sabbath. By doing that, Jesus is a threat to their control over the whole thing. When Jesus heals that man on the Sabbath, he's breaking the rules of injustice. The scripture is really referencing that of Ezekiel chapter 34. Jesus, the religious leaders know he's talking about them when he talks about being the good shepherd. Listen, this is Ezekiel 34. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with wool, and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally, so they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over all the mountains on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. So Jesus is, is, is bringing, he's raising his issue so they will know that he's talking about them. In fact, Jesus deliberately picks a fight with the religious and political leaders of his day knowing that he knows where it's going to end up. It's going to end up with him on the cross. And it's going to lead to our salvation. That's why we can't escape politics, folks. In fact, we can't understand the application of Scripture unless we understand the political context that gives rise to it. All Scripture has a political context. So watch out, folks. Watch out when those at the bottom are being fleeced by those at the how do you know when you are part of a corrupt and religious or political system? When those at the bottom find more and more of their resources flowing up. I call it trickle up economics. You remember trickle down? It's trickle up, but it's not a trickle, it's a flood. When those at the bottom find more and more of their resources going toward those at the top. And those resources flow to those on the left. And on the right. In Jesus' day, the Pharisees were the hired hands in our story. And the way they kept the poor people poor, this is what they said. They said, you know what? The, the, the Bible said that if you are sick or poor, it must be because you broke God's command. If you keep my commandments, you'll be blessed. If you don't, you'll be you won't. <laughs> so those are poor people, you know, if, if they're sick or if they're poor. The, the religious and the elite could say, well, it must be because you're not good enough. But look at us! Why, we're healthy, and we're rich, so that must mean that God endorses what we're doing. And the Pharisees were the, the religious police. They're there making sure that the people understand that so that the money keeps going where? They didn't care about the sheep. In Luther's day, one of the hired hands was a guy who was a priest by the name of, of uh, Tetzel. Anyone hear of Tetzel? Mm -hmm. And this is before his, Luther discovered justification by faith. But whenever the church needed a fundraiser, you know, some bishop needed more money than he could possibly spend, or if you wanted to build St. Peter's in Rome, because this is where the indulgence money went, Got to see Michelangelo somehow, the Sistine Chapel. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they needed a fundraiser, and Tetzel would come in and be like, Remember those of us who were old enough when the circus would come to town? And when we were kids, we'd get all excited. This is what Tetzel, they would come in with a big parade, a big thing, they'd come into town, they'd get everybody there, and then Tetzel would make, would dramatize the fires of hell. He would get them so worried about their own souls and also those who were stuck in purgatory. Then they would, he would lead this big procession into the church, and then they would fade out. You know how to get out of that dilemma, don't you? Just give the church money. If you give the church money, you can get yourself and your relatives going up. Boy, that's a money maker, isn't it? 
By the way, you know the church owned forty percent of the land in Europe at that time. Forty percent. No wonder people wanted to be bishops. <laughs> no wonder bishops were appointed. Tetzel was the higher hand of the church of his day, and the poor suffered. Makes you wonder what how religion and politics is being used today to serve the same. and doing it in the name of God. Watch out when those at the bottom are being pleased by those at the top. So our scripture today invites us then to follow the good shepherd. Our scripture invites us to base our lives on the teachings and the examples of the good shepherd. To let Jesus inform our politics rather than letting our politics inform our Jesus. And the more we do this, the more we learn to recognize the voice of Jesus. The more we consider what he has to say, the more the voices of Fox News and CNN begin, we begin to get some clarity because we've got a third voice in here. In the choir of political voices, we hear another voice. Because you see, the voice of the Good Shepherd is speaking to all of us, calling us each by name. You know that God knows your name today. And he's calling to you inviting you. At that time when the, when the shepherd would want to lead the sheep up, he would, he would have names for each of them. And they would recognize their name and the voice, and they would follow that, that shepherd. They wouldn't follow someone else. You know, a better translation of Psalm 23, 23 where it says, and I will follow, I will follow him all the days of my life, it should be, would be better translated, and I wish I'll be pursued. I shall be pursued every day of my life. The shepherd is constantly inviting us to a larger perspective than what we've been told. So the real question is not who has the best politics, but can I by faith receive God's love for me? Because that's where it begins. When we are convinced of the goodness of the shepherd toward us, and we experience it ourselves. Now I can begin to see other people in the same way. Because God knows all our names. Whether a Republican or a Democrat, he knows our names. And he's inviting us to receive his love because when we have that, it changes how we see people. It changes how we see politics. It changes how we see those at the bottom, especially. See, Jesus, Jesus could see that all behind all that politics buttressed by religion was a simple blind man who needed to be healed, even if it broke their rules. Martin Luther could see that behind all this dogma of indulgence and all this money flowing up was really the hearts of people who wanted to know that God loved them and accepted them, that their sins were forgiven, past, present, and future. Martin Luther wanted the people to be free so they weren't going to be no longer manipulated by the religious and politics of his day. Martin Luther King could see beyond all the rationalization for slavery and segregation and racism. He could see beyond that that it was just greed covered up behind rationalization. Greed that justified all of that. Racism that still plagues our country today. You see, the voice of Jesus cuts through all that propaganda and gets down to the reality of love. A new commandment that I give you, that you do what? That you love one another. See, that's the politics. That's it. As I have loved you, this is the voice of the Good Shepherd calling your name today. And don't let those on the left or the right Diminish the voice of Christ. Politics has symbols. Folks, these are the symbols of our politics. Where everyone is invited around the table. Everyone. And as we see our shepherd laying down his life for us, we are then invited to lay down our life for others. That's our politics.
scripture invites us to follow the good shepherd. Let's pray. God, we're thankful that you sent your son into this world to reveal us, to reveal to us the uh, power plays going on all around us, and then to show us a way out of that. We pray, God, that we would hear your voice speaking to each of us about your, the depth of love that you have for each of us, that we might in turn love those around us. May that be voice resonating in our hearts today. In Jesus' name.